Welcome to Coffee with Job on Wednesday morning. And great to hear from so many of you. Um, particularly recently, I've been getting messages or emails from those of you who are struggling with divorce or illness or bereavement. And just, we, we live in this world of sorrows and tears. And, you know, when we look at the book of Job, people say, well, why, why do that? You know, it's just so, all the subjects sound so depressing. But they're not depressing when you're going through them and what's being brought to you is the comfort of Christ. And that's what we're trying to do. So, um, I guess there's just a wrong way to comfort people, isn't there? Annabelle and I were in New York one time and Annabelle got something in her eye and she went to the chemist and there was a woman in front of her in the queue, turned around, saw her and said, it looked as though she was crying, you know. Get over it, get over it. I was going, well, she really had been upset. That wouldn't have helped much. Well, this is what Bildad is doing here. Let me read just the first 12 verses of chapter 18. Then Bildad the Shuite replied, When will you end these speeches? Be sensible and then we can talk. Why are we regarded as cattle and considered stupid in your sight? You who tear yourself to pieces in your anger, is the earth to be abandoned for your sake or must the rocks be moved from their place? The lamp of a wicked man is snuffed out. The flame of his fire stops burning. The light in his tent becomes dark. The lamp beside him goes out. The vigor of his step is weakened. His own schemes throw him down. His feet thrust him into a net. He wanders into its mesh. A trap seizes him by the heel. A snare holds him fast. A noose is hidden for him on the ground. A trap lies in his path. Terrors startle him on every side and dog his every step. Calamity is hungry for him. Disaster is ready for him when he falls. Bill Dad's really angry. By the way, the imagery in this is brilliant and the poetry is absolutely brilliant and it shows that you can use creative and artistic gifts in a way that is not really, really helpful. Um, Instead of your rod and staff, come for me, Psalm 23, verse 4, this has just been battered and battered and battered. Shakespeare in A Winter's Tale says, I saw his heart in his face. We need that. We need someone to understand. We need someone in, I think it's Philippians 4, 14. Paul says, it, yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. We need people to share in our troubles. And... I, I read this morning, uh, I'm reading through uh, Thomas Manton, and I highlighted some of this, and I just thought I'd read some of it to you just to show you what the real comfort that God brings. Um, I do this with books, I'm afraid you can see, I, I, I highlight them, and of course Anna says, oh, there'll be no use to anyone, but there used to be, because I, I can remember where things are. This is what he says about the comfort that God brings. This is beautiful, listen to this. Christ's comforts are not reported to the ear only, but felt in the heart. The joy of the world makes a great noise, but in the midst of it, the heart is sorrowful. But God feasts his children with hidden manna. They have meat and drink, which the world does not know of. The two great general grounds of support against heart trouble are God's merciful nature and Christ's mediation. Now that's what Job is always looking for a mediator. And he's appealing to the merciful nature of God, although it looks to him and he's being told as though God is not merciful and God is punishing him. But God's merciful nature, you appeal to that and the mediation of Christ. God comforts those that are cast down, 2 Corinthians 7 verse 6. He is very tender of all afflicted creatures, much more of his people. You're one of these people who've written to me and you're really struggling and you're thinking, God is cold and God is distant or I don't experience him as I expect. But you have to lay hold of the tenderness and the compassion of God. And how do we know God is like that? Because Christ was. There's nothing in Christ that is ungodlike. God's comfort, says Manson, are built on his covenant and have a commanding force and overpowering efficacy on the soul. I just, I love, do you know what the Puritans do? They go to the heart. And I love that God's comforts are not just the superficial ones like comfort food or even comfort coffee, comfort alcohol, but they are 
comfort that go right into the very depths of our being where we feel the pain the most. I pray you would know that comfort. I pray you would know the comfort of Christ. And I shall see you, God willing, tomorrow. Bye.